The difference between a quantity and the value used to represent it in a program is called absolute error. The absolute error of a quantity divided by that quantity is called relative error. Relative error is often the more important notion. For example, a difference of 50 micrometers is quite significant when you're talking about paper thickness, but it isn't important at all if you're measuring the height of a tower. For example, the square root of 200 lies between two representable float 64 values. Therefore, when we evaluate square root of 200 numerically, the result is stored as one of the two float 64 values closest to square root of 200. The difference between square root of 200 and the float 64 value that represents it is error, and in this case the error is about 5 times 10 to the minus 16th. The relative error is this amount divided by the square root of 200, which is about 3.7 times 10 to the minus 17th. Rounding to the nearest representable number is just one type of error, called round-off error. Inaccuracies can also arise from algorithms which approximate the functions we intend to compute. This is called truncation error. For example, if we use the first two terms in the Taylor series of the sine function to approximate sine of 0.1 as 0.1 minus 0.1 cubed over 6, then the difference between our result and the actual value of sine of 0.1 is truncation error. Statistical error results from using randomness in an algorithm. When we poll a thousand randomly selected people to measure the opinions of the population at large, the discrepancy between the sample results and what the results would have been if we had been able to poll the whole population is statistical error. Let's introduce some vocabulary for thinking about how error propagates through a calculation. Understanding how errors transform will equip us to be alert to the computational limitations of various approaches to solving a particular problem. This in turn will help us manage error and ameliorate its effects. The condition number of a function is another function with the same domain. It measures the factor by which it magnifies or shrinks relative error near each input. For example, the reciprocal function magnifies errors when given an input between 0 and 1. But the relative error is pretty much the same before and after taking the reciprocal. This is true of other input values as well. In fact, the condition number of the reciprocal function is 1 everywhere. To be more precise, the relative error of the solution if the initial data is a plus delta a instead of a is the derivative of s of a times delta a divided by s of a, and the relative error in the input is delta a over a. Taking the ratio of these quantities, we obtain the formula absolute value of a times absolute value of the derivative of a divided by absolute value of s of a. Lots of functions have constant condition numbers. The exponential function has condition number a. It magnifies relative error more as the input increases. The condition number of the function x minus 1 is x over x minus 1. In other words, it blows up as x gets close to 1. The condition number of a problem is the condition number of the function that maps the problem's initial data to the solution of the problem. For example, given a real number a, we might want to solve the equation ax minus 1 equals 0. The solution to this equation is x equals 1 over a, so the map from the initial data to the problem solution is the reciprocal function. As we just figured out, this function has a condition number of 1. For a 2 by 2 example, consider the linear system a369 times xy equals 4, 5. If we solve this system exactly, we find that the solution is 7 over 3a minus 2, comma 5a minus 24 over 9a minus 2. We can use the formula for condition number to find that kappa is given by an expression with the absolute value of a minus 2 in the denominator. In other words, when a is very close to 2, this matrix has a large condition number, and small changes in the input value a lead to large changes in the solution that come out. If a is a matrix, then we can use the singular value decomposition of a to find the condition number of the linear transformation that a represents. Suppose that u sigma v transpose is the singular value decomposition of a, with the diagonal entries of s arranged in decreasing order, and let v max and v min be the first and last columns of v, and let u max and u min be the first and last columns of u. If we apply a to v min and v min plus t times v max, then the images are sigma min times u min and sigma min times u min plus t times sigma max u max. If t is small, then the relative change here is sigma max divided by sigma min. The largest relative error associated with rounding to the nearest float is called machine epsilon. For float 64's, this number is half the tick spacing in the interval from 1 to 2, since the farthest from a tick a point can be is halfway between two consecutive ticks. 
In other words, machine epsilon is one half to the 53. Sometimes authors use the term machine epsilon to refer to twice this number, in other words, the actual tick spacing. Since we typically have to introduce a relative error around machine epsilon to encode the initial data of a problem and begin calculating with it, we expect to introduce an error on the order of machine epsilon times the problem's condition number in the solution. An algorithm which solves a problem with error reasonably close to kappa times machine epsilon is said to be stable. So a problem is ill-conditioned or well-conditioned according to whether it is possible in principle to solve the problem accurately, while an algorithm is stable or unstable according to whether it performs well given the constraints of the problem's condition number.